Welcome to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, live from Las Vegas in the AMP TV studio, AAMP.TV. Today's show is brought to you by UppercutChops.com. Check out their tasty selection of all-natural, dry-aged, USDA prime Wagyu steaks and chops. Wait till you taste their best-in-class New York steaks, the filet mignon, and of course, the king of all, those gigantic cowboy cut and tomahawk cut ribeyes. Best I ever had, probably be the best you ever had as well. Check them out at UppercutChops.com. That's UppercutChops.com. Or give them a call, find out what's for dinner, 702-799-9935, 702-799-9935, 702-799-9935 for UppercutChops.com. Yes! <laughs> Boy, those are good. All right, a big welcome in to everybody. Listen again on our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates and independents from coast to coast. Everybody else watching on Cox, Comcast, Spectrum, Frontier, Time Warner, and Wow Cable TV Welcome in. Also, everybody on Facebook on Chicago Food Favorites. Yes. Here's a page, folks, that we run. Why? Because we love food, especially from back home in Chicago. And guess what? You could join as well. Chicago Food Favorites. Just go to Facebook, click on join, post anything you want, except don't call pizza za, because we don't do that one. Now you get an astounding round of booze for that. And don't call it a pie, because then we'll know you're from New York. But anyway, make sure that you like, subscribe, follow, join, just because it's fun. We get nothing for saying this. And also, make sure you tell them Sports Circus sent you. All right. All right. And we are here today with one of our favorites, a special guest, also a member of Chicago Food Favorites on Facebook. And that would be a gentleman that's going to introduce himself right now. Go ahead. Hi there, it's Henry Moorhead, live here in actually Denver right now. Just got back from Chicago, but uh, it's really warm there uh, for this time of year. It's out. I don't know if you know, it's 70s today. Yes, I heard it was 72 today, but I heard it's going to be 28 tomorrow, right? Because that's kind of what you expect in Chicago, yeah, Chicago. Land, isn't it? <laughs> it is out there that, one day. You know? yeah. That's that's right. Yeah, All right, Emery, thanks for looking forward to it. Emery, thanks for joining us today. Sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead, young man. No, just I'm glad to be on again with you. It's been about a year. Oh, and, yeah. And uh, you need some volume there, you say? Oh, no, no, we're good. We're good. Okay. Hey, listen, folks, we do this live. So everybody okay. watching on TV, everybody listening on radio, watching on social media, also in hotels from coast to coast on hotel TV. Listen, folks, we don't edit this. We're going to leave it as it is. We make mistakes. You know why? Because we can. And we leave them out there for a fun, open dialogue. And Emery, let me ask you right from the top. I mean, look, without time stamping the show, we want to be able to play it again, right? So we've seen Super Bowls played. You've been in a Super Bowl on arguably the best single season team in the history of the National Football League. Of course, that always deserves a round of applause. But I'm not saying that because I'm from Chicago. It was... As, as I've seen it, and as millions of other people, the most dominating club that the league has ever seen for a single sure. season, right or wrong? That's very true. I mean, number one, we had the number one defense for sure of all time. I mean, we won that Super Bowl. We won the two games leading up to the Super Bowl. The defense shut out the Rams, and then they shut out the Giants. And then we get to the Super Bowl, and I don't know if you remember, but Walter fumbled on the third play of the game. And they kicked the field goal, and then we put up like 42 points or something in a row. And then they are uh, 44, and then they got a safety. We got a safety, made it 46, and uh, and then New England uh, got a late touchdown on the second string after they had already scored twice. So it was quite a dominating uh, defense uh, that really led our team. But like a lot of teams, the other offense sometimes get left behind when you have a great team and uh, our defense, and uh, but we led the league in rushing four years in a row, time of possession four years in a row, and played outstanding defense, and that was the formula. Keep the ball out of their hands, let let the defense tee off on them, and uh, it was a great, fun year for not only just Chicago, but people 
everybody that watched the Bears that year. Uh, they brought a lot of fans to the NFL. Well, you know, Emory, also at that time, you may recall as you're watching the replays of the games you were playing in, this is when Monday Night Football was starting to tally up sacks, hurries, knockdowns, and all that other stuff because it was so overwhelming. And I'll never forget seeing that for the first time across the bottom of the screen with this knockdowns, hurries, and all this other stuff. Because you've never seen it before. At least I don't ever recall. Do you? I do not. I know that uh, the year before, I think there was an NFL record that had 72 sacks on defense. And I can't remember how many there was in 85. But, uh, no, that defense was very intimidating. And, uh, in fact, I had a roommate, a couple roommates, one in Green Bay that uh, that said, you know, that really rough game we had with the Packers. And they were slamming Walter out of bounds and all that. And, uh, it was just, they hated, well, actually, Forrest Gregg and Mike Dicker hated each other. So, naturally, it came back to the team the same way. But I remember in 84, when uh, the Raiders had won the championship the year before, and they came into Soldier's Field, and uh, the Bears knocked out both of their quarterbacks, uh, Gary Huff, and I uh, can't remember the other one, and uh, Ray Guy, the punter, finished the game, halftime. And then he said, my roommate told me, he says, man, they were in there arguing who had to go back in and finish that game. Because the Bears, I think, already had six, seven sacks in the first half. And it was just a scary situation to play the 85 Bears. So here's an interesting thing. You know, you think of yourself, tight end, wide receiver, whatever, whatever. Right? So you're on the offensive side of the ball. Because of the wild success with getting to the quarterback and getting to the ball, basically go find the ball, right? Get into the ball. I, I dare you to beat us man coverage downfield. One of those things. Did it ever exactly. make you want to just say, give me a couple of snaps on the other side of the ball and I want to get in on this mayhem? No, no but everybody on defense wanted to get in. And uh, like I said, in the Super Bowl, I think they had two scores of the safety, the second string defense. Uh, Jim Morrissey actually ran one down to the one yard line. Reggie Phillips intercepted a pass for a touchdown. Henry Wagner got a safety late in the game. I mean, it was just party central. That was the second string. After the first string <laughs> had done all the damage, it was sitting on the bench. So, yeah, those guys love to get in there and make plays. Uh, as an offensive guy, you know, you sit there and watch and just can't believe how aggressive that Buddy Ryan was going after these guys. And you're right, uh, the corners were on the island. So they were. Sometimes he might send nine and leave them guys all by themselves. But the fact was, the quarterback never had any time to, to pass it. And they just throw it up in the air. And then them guys would come off of their guy and pick it off. I mean, it was a pretty, uh, pretty aggressive season. What I liked about it, just from a spectator side, playing video games, growing up, playing football. Because I played, what, one season of football when I was in junior high and I wrecked my knee, and that was the end of that. But my point is, when you would play some of these older video games, you could stack everybody up on the line, kind of like what the Bears did, and just dare them to try to beat you with something. Chances are the quarterback was going to throw something that was going to get picked off because it's basically up for grabs at that point, right? <laughs> or the the quarterback's going to get drilled. And sorry, I know, Don Horn, you're watching this one, but sometimes you know the quarterbacks do get hit from time to time, if you know what I mean, right? We, we can't get around that one. But what we do know <laughs> is that when we line up with these video games sometimes, you could do the kind of things that the Bears did, just stack the line. It's like, go ahead, I'll dare you. But I love the fact that they, yeah. no points were given up in the playoff games, and that still has yet to be repeated anywhere in the National Football League from that point. It's never happened. Yeah. No, it, it was just a great defense. That's why you say for a single season, uh, it was probably the best team ever. And, uh, you know, we lost one game to uh, Miami. I think that was the 13th game of the year. It was. And, uh, and, and just, you know, that game, uh, Don Shula had a little something for our defense for a change. That's right. You know, he looked at it and figured some stuff out that nobody else did. And like all good coaches, we took the same thing that Shula did on Monday and put it in our offense the next week. So, uh, but, uh, no, it was a great time, great fun. And uh, nobody, I mean, our defense, like you said, uh, but the great thing about it was the front four. 
I mean, those guys were unbelievable. And then you start blitzing Mike Singletary or Otis Wilson or Wilbur Marshall and Otis Wilson, you know, and it just becomes a great, uh, it just puts a lot of pressure on the, on the other team. Yeah, and look, those guys were so tough. You know, everybody says, well, you know, the, the, the Giants the following year, of course, with Carson and Leonard Marshall and Lawrence Taylor and um, I'm missing the other guy. Uh, Car- Harry Carson. Uh, or Gary Reasons. Uh, oh, nope. no, the guy from Michigan State. No, we got. Uh, outside linebacker. Uh, Carl Banks. Yeah, really Carl Banks. Right. Carl Banks, yeah. Yeah, and Banks. eventually eventually Leonard Marshall. Leonard's a good friend of the show. I hope Leonard gets in there as well. But, you know, look at our Bears guys as well here in our last 30 he seconds. The, uh, I think he went into the Ring of Fame this year, didn't he? Last yeah, he, he went into the Ring of Honor uh, the year previous, right. and hopefully Leonard gets in there. You know, Leonard had more sacks than Carl Banks and Harry Carson. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. I'll yeah. tell you what, folks, we're going to be back here with Emery Moorhead, one of our favorites here on the Sports Circus, live from Las Vegas. Of course, Emery is over in Colorado, but guess what? We're not. We're here in Vegas, and it's nice and warm and toasty, and we're going to be back here in just a few minutes on the Circus. Lots more to come. Who knows where we're going to go? I sure as hell don't know. Maybe Emery does, maybe doesn't. Don't go anywhere back in a few, folks. I'm your ringmaster cell of the Sports Circus, a primetime nationally syndicated television, radio, sports, and entertainment show. The Sports Circus covers topics others are too scared to talk about. There's no other primetime show like it on here that'll punch you in the face and you'll beg for more. Join me, Hall of Famers, World Champions, and all-star celebrity guests for chaos and controversy here on Lipson and all podcast platforms, plus the SportsCircus.com. Remember, folks, it's a circus and we prove it every day. Do you know someone with a drug or alcohol problem? Get help right now. Insurance may cover everything. Stop the drug and alcohol nightmare. Are drug and alcohol problems hitting you too close to home? Get help right now. Insurance may cover everything. 800-831-1560. 800-831-1560. 800-831-1560. That's 800-831-1560. Can your IRA stand up to the next financial crisis that our top economists are saying is at our doorsteps? By allocating a percentage of your IRA into physical gold and silver with a tax-free rollover, you can diversify and safeguard your holdings from turbulent markets and economic downturns by putting your IRA back on the gold standard. Find out how to safeguard your assets with a tax-free rollover with a Genesis Gold IRA. The only IRA that can hold physical precious metals. Call now for your free gold and silver report. Protect your IRA today with one simple phone call and learn how to qualify for up to $10,000 in free silver. Call Genesis Gold Group, empowering faith-driven stewardship. 800-932-5517. 800-932-5517. 800-932-5517. That's 800-932-5517. Hello Americans, it's Uncle Sam here. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes to the IRS or state, don't worry. I've got important news that may help you negotiate a lower tax bill. In today's economy, the IRS has released a variety of new rules and is offering more flexible terms to help Americans looking to settle their IRS debt. If you apply today, we may be able to lift your wage garnishments and release a freeze on your bank assets or business. Our team of tax professionals can resolve your case and stop collection actions against you. Even if you've been audited or haven't filed a return in years, they can help. Call right now and find out if you qualify to settle your IRS debt for far less than what you owe. Pick up your phone right now and call us for a free $500 IRS tax review. Don't wait. Here's the number. Call right now. 800-950-2049. 800-950-2049. 800-950-2049. For the last time, that's 800-950-2049. 
2049. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm Roy Firestow. Now it's time to throw it back to Sal. Thank you, Roy, and welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, live from Las Vegas in the Amp TV studio, AAMP TV. Hey, listen, folks. So we've got Emery Moorhead, Super Bowl 20 champion, on the show. And, of course, Emery always gets a nice round of applause from the sports circus whenever he's on, just because we can. In fact, we're going to show him right now. And Emery, I'm holding up a couple of items here. And can you tell me what these are from? These are from the Dicka and Jaws cigar smoker at Super Bowl, what else, the 58. Just held there in Las Vegas. That's right. That's right. And so tell everybody about the Gridiron Greats Assistance Fund, if you will. Well, this was founded by Mike Dicker, who felt like there wasn't enough help for older football players. They were, they were going through, he thought, too many changes in order to get money that people needed to to live. And so he started Gridiron Grace. Jeez, it must be about 10 or 12 years ago. And uh, it's become very good. And that was the beneficiary of the cigar smoker, was to raise money. Because they give away a lot of money. People apply for, you know, that... Maybe they're getting ready to lose their car, or maybe their doctor bills got too high. Somehow their expenses got away, and he's able to give people assistance almost, you know, within a week or two to help people that uh, to survive to get out of a crisis that they might be in. Right, and you know what? Also, folks, there is a second organization that is equally responsible for this, and that's the Ron Jaworski's Jaws Youth Playbook to help the at-risk youth. And tell you what, folks, Ron Jaworski does a great job of helping kids across the country, the at-risk youth. Let's face it, they don't have the resources either, but a guy like Ron Jaworski will take proceeds from the Jaws Youth Playbook and do everything he can to better the lifestyle, the communities, and the safety and security of these kids. And what a wonderful guy. I got to tell you, Ditka and Jaws really did a wonderful job with this. And here's a little care package that I kind of put together here with some of these cigars. Of course, everybody watching on TV and on Facebook, etc. There's all kinds of neat ones here. And check them out at DitkaJawsCigars.com. That's DitkaJawsCigars.com. And do your part and help these great causes. There you go. <laughs> if you don't, you're going to punch yeah, in the head. Yeah. You know, they both do great work. And Jaws, I've seen him on Facebook, and he's giving away bikes for kids. He's having fundraisers all year round, not just the Dick of Jaws event. Exactly. And so you're right, he does do it. Yeah, he, he really does a lot of good for the community. And, and let's face it, these two nonprofit organizations are working 365 days a year to help their causes, help those retired players that made these these people that get these crazy contracts today. I, I'm sorry, but I, I have a real problem with some of these numbers. It just doesn't calculate. I take the pre-93 collective bargaining guys to the post-93 guys and these ridiculous paydays. And good for them. But I, I look at it, Embry, and I say, is $3 million a game a reasonable number or is it just what the market will bear? It's what the market will bear. I mean, it goes up. It just got a $30 million per team uh, salary cap increase last week. And you don't get it if you don't make any money. That's right. And that's done done every year. And now that, you know, every team's getting $30 million more to spend on players. So it's very profitable. And I have to think that a lot of it has to do with that gambling, that DraftKings and all that uh, puts a lot of extra money in those guys' pockets. And that's how Roger Goodell can afford to get a salary of forty to fifty million every year because he's making the money. The money! <laughs> it, it just reminds me of "Show Me the Money," and you know the crazy thing about yeah. it is it almost seems like when you're watching the games in this era, I'm not going to single any player or anything out, but it just seems like it. They're almost making business decisions 
on the field. Oh, yeah. Maybe a little alligator arms. Uh, I don't know. Maybe a little bit of that. Or I don't want to play consecutive games or too many because I don't want to potentially shorten my career and my ability to earn money. Is that a fair assumption? Well, I think that, you know, everything is a business decision now. I mean, you're not making 75000 You know, you're making millions. And uh, the average salary, I think, is almost close to $3 million now, 2.8. And uh, it just, you know, when you're making that kind of money, I mean, it's got to be a business decision. And they don't practice hardly at all either. I mean, I think it's 16 full pad practices in 18 weeks. So uh, the game is a little bit sloppier played, but it's much more safer than what it was in the era that I played. And uh, back then, you know, it was just, like you said, those 85 Bears, the object was to get to the quarterback and get him out of the game. And now you can't touch the quarterback. You can't hit a receiver downfield. That's uh, defenseless. Uh, you can't chop the offense, the defensive lineman. Uh, you know, it's just, everything is about safety now. And a lot of people say, oh, you guys were a much better football game. Yeah, but if you see me and you see some of my teammates limping around, uh, it's much safer and better now than it was 40 years ago or 30 years ago. Yeah, you know, when we did the, so when the show started, there's the opening promo, uh, this is Mike Golick, and you're listening to the Sports Circus. You know, Mike had, I think, 12 knee surgeries, if I'm not mistaken, right? And and that's a very common thing for players from your era. Crazy amounts of knee surgeries and this and that. I talked to Doug Plank about this a bunch of times, and Doug just said, look, the way that I play, and he told me this, and you could probably attest to this. He said, look, I told everybody, Please get out of the way because I don't know who I'm hitting. I'm just coming with my head down, and I'm going to hit somebody. Yeah, I mean, that's that uh, that's what cost him in Chicago because Dicker had a preconceived idea of what Doug Plank did against the Dallas Cowboys. And he's, and as soon as he did it, you know, in the mini camp, the very first mini camp, that's when he cut him because, you know, Doug was a missile, man. He was a missile on just coming to deliver, and he had one way to play, and that was the way he played, and that's how he made a living. And he heard a lot of his other teammates too. Yeah, because he, he come in there with his head down and hit somebody in the back or something, you know. Right. But uh, that was the way he played, man. That was the style. Well, yeah, he just played that way, and he just said, "Look, I wasn't the best player when he came out of Ohio State. I mean, he just did what he did, and he just played everything." in top speed and top everything. I had this conversation with Kevin Green, uh, rest his soul. It was, it was, I think, his last online appearance or last show in a, uh, appearance. And Kevin said, you know, when I got dealt from team A to team B, I, I think it was when he was dealt, when he was dealt to Carolina, they had said, yeah. they said, you're going to have to slow it down a little bit. He said, well, I practice on at game speed or game day speed on Thursday so I can play at game day speed on Sunday. And he's like, I don't know how to dial it down, right, this kind of thing. And so, you know, certain players, they have that burnt into their heads. And, and I don't really see anything wrong with the idea of getting out there and working hard. But I watch even something as simple as the Pro Bowl. Why even have it at this point? Because you're playing a flag football game. Yeah. Just name either your first team all pros and maybe your pro bowlers. That's it, right? Maybe a second team all pro because that's you know traditional. But you don't have to get out there and play a flag football game because it almost diminishes the value of the game as I see it. What do you think? Well, you know, also when they moved it out of Hawaii, what's the incentive? You right. Know, you could take your family to Hawaii and enjoy it. Uh, now they're going to Tampa or something. You know, it just, you know, it's not... I don't think the incentive is there to go and do it, and not everybody's making so much money. The last thing you want to do is, you know, have your knee tear up while you're running around trying to entertain a game that, and the money there is nowhere close to the amount of money these guys are making every game in a regular season. Right. And or- I think that's why you see a lot of people that do not play, and then you have people like, uh, who was the quarterback that uh, Gardner missed you? All of a sudden, he's at the Pro Bowl, and uh, he's been a career backup and will be a career backup. And now he's going to Pro Bowls because people don't want to play in it, and the best players are in the Super Bowl. 
and the game is played between this championship and the Super Bowl week. So that Pro Bowl, yeah, they got to do something with it to uh, at least uh, make it more exciting or something different. They're trying, but I can't watch it. At least it was better. I don't know if it was better than the NBA All-Star game. Either. Oh, come on. Don't even go there. The 400 points. That, that's crazy. 396 points in a game. <laughs> And you know what was interesting here in our last minute of the segment? What was interesting is I looked at the spray chart of where the shots were taken, right? And so you either had two things occur on the court. Either you had a, a slam dunk, right? So you're you're in, you're right underneath the, within two feet, or you had three-point shots. There were a, a grand total of six shots that were in between somewhere in the 18, 22-foot range, right? The Bill Winnington range, right? That 22-foot baseline. Right, so there, there was literally six of those for the team in the West, and I think there was four, if I'm not mistaken, for the team in the East. But that's it, three-point or slam dunk, nothing else. And honestly, the game, as I saw at the NBA All-Star game, it was sort of an abomination and embarrassment. And even from one player that I know, he commented from the NBA, and he's a former All-Star as well, he just said, look, I had to turn this thing off after five minutes because I just couldn't take it anymore. Yeah. It wasn't even a game. No, it wasn't even a pickup it. game. Yeah. I haven't watched the NBA All-Star game in about 10 years. You know it what? It just is not. Uh, I remember going up and watching, you know, Hal Greer and uh, all these guys really compete at that All-Star game. And, yeah. And uh, nothing now. Yeah, it, it was terrible. All right, folks, tell you what, we're going to be back here with Emery Moorhead, Super Bowl Twenty champion from the Chicago Bears in just a few moments. Lots more to come. Don't go anywhere. Attention business owners, you and your customers are listening to this commercial right now. Face it, every business needs customers, even yours. The Sports Circus is a primetime nationally syndicated program that's carried on ABC, NBC, CNBC, and Westwood One News affiliates, plus CBS, Fox, and NBC sports affiliates across North America with coverage from Hawaii to New York. Also, the Sports Circus is available to the 180 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, and the Sports Circus gets about 4 million website visitors per month, which could click through your website and bring sales. The Sports Circus provides great content featuring celebrity guests from sports and entertainment to our audience every weekday, which your company could greatly benefit from by increasing your visibility, foot traffic, eyeballs to your website, and calls from potential customers. Call us right now at 702-799-9935. Again, 702-799-9935. Or email us at info at thesportscircus.com. That's info at thesportscircus.com. Drive your sales today by advertising with the Sports Circus. Are you tired of high cable TV rates? Sign up for Dish today and get a $500 bonus offer while supplies last. Plus, lock in your price for two years guaranteed. Call All American Dish, your dish authorized retailer now. 800 476 6087. 800 476 6087. 800 476 6087. Offers require credit qualification, 24 month commitment, early termination fee, and e auto pay. Restrictions apply. Call for details. Do you owe the IRS $10,000 or more in back taxes? Are you being audited or investigated? Has the IRS sent you a letter demanding payment? You may not owe what they claim. Make this free call to the tax doctor now. Let them negotiate with the IRS on your behalf. 800-296-1209. 800-296-1209. That's 800-296-1209. If you have diabetes, listen up. If you have insurance, you can qualify for a continuous glucose monitor. With a CGM, you can continuously track your levels and trends and spend more time in range, significantly lowering your A1C. More importantly, a CGM eliminates the one thing most people with diabetes hate, painful finger sticks. Order your new continuous glucose monitor today. If you use insulin and if you've seen your diabetes care provider within the last six months, 
months, you may qualify for your own CGM right now. We'll do all the insurance paperwork and deliver your new CGM at little or no out-of-pocket cost to you. Medicare and most insurances will cover your CGM, so don't wait. Have your insurance handy and call the Aptiva Medical CGM Health Hotline right now. 800 That's 800-320-2751. Hey everyone, Dave Jackson here, ESPN Rules Analyst on ESPN Hockey, and you're listening to the Sports Circus. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm Yuri Master Sal, live from Las Vegas in the AMP TV studio, AAMP.TV. Folks, make sure you check out thesportscircus.com for our upcoming guests, our prior guests, our recorded shows, which are a podcast. They can be found on all podcast platforms, as well as make sure you check out the partners page at thesportscircus.com. Lots of great partners. One of them that's been with us since the very beginning is the College of Southern Nevada Athletics. Check them out at csncoyotes.com for the College of Southern Nevada Athletics. Of course, a nice round of applause for them. They've been with us since the very beginning. All right, welcome back to everybody listening in on our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates and independents from coast to coast, including our friends over at Honolulu on CBS Sports 1500. KHKA, that's home of the New York Yankees and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Welcome in to everybody from Southern California, all the way up to Seattle, to New York, to Boston, Chicagoland, of course, can't forget there, Denver as well, all the way down to Southwest Florida. Big hello to our friends over in Atlanta, WDJY 99.1 FM, as well as WAUD, home of the Atlanta Braves. That is out of Auburn, Alabama, WAUD, 1230 AM. Of course, round of applause for everybody. We just keep throwing it out there. Everybody on Chicago Food Favorites, thanks for joining us with the great Emory Moorhead, Super Bowl 20 champion, and from the Chicago Bears. So what I have to ask you are a billion things, but I'm going to narrow it down to a few things. You had mentioned during the break about, you know, those guys with the 49ers, they were taken care of. What do you mean by they were taken care of by the ownership? Well, this is before they had salary caps and all that. So everybody was getting well paid, but uh, Eddie DeBartolo just really loved his players. And I remember one year, uh, this is way back when in the 80s, when there weren't even hardly, nobody had laptops. Well, Eddie bought all the wives' laptops for them for letting their husbands play and be away from. You know, just stuff like that. And he, uh, I know another time I was told that you know, he was very generous with all of his money. They had a reunion, and uh, they all went out to dinner, and then Eddie told uh, Joe, I, I got this. And he pulled out a wide $10,000, gave it to Joe, and then when everybody started chipping in, and Joe goes, no, I got it, I got it. And then everybody said, no, we're all chipping in. And then he pulls out the ten grand and said, look what Eddie got for us. You know, and uh, so, you know, he just did stuff like that for his players which I couldn't imagine that the Hallises would be doing that. Uh, but it was different, different type of organization. You know, put the players first, you know, and that's what Eddie did. So, you know, he really loved uh, Dwight Clark, too. That was one of his guys and, you know, took care. I saw this, what is that, 30 for 30, where they buried, you know, he had a tree back there for Dwight. I mean, he just, in his yard, he just was a good guy to his players. You know, out of all the people that I've spoken with in the years that I've been doing this, you know, I kind of fell into this. It just kind of happened. And the 49er guys that I know, the former players, they've all said the same thing. The organization really took care of the players. I mean, well above and beyond. And I was going to ask you about alum from the different organizations, because I've heard this from probably about 20 different teams. I don't know how well certain teams took care of their players. But what I, what I have heard is from enough players to know that there are certain teams that really go above and beyond the call of duty, like the 49ers, and then some that don't. And, and I will say right here in Las Vegas that the Raiders have an issue with certain things. And, I mean, even from cheapness in the locker room to vending machines, 
you have to pay a dollar for a drink or whatever the heck it is. And, you know, we even saw some of that That's in that ridiculous. movie Moneyball. Right. Yeah. And what do you yeah. think, Emery? Well, I know, I know. Go ahead. Well, I know that the players, you know, they have full, they don't even, guys don't even have to cook anymore. You could take a meal home with you. Uh, they have all the nutritionists, full nutritionists on staff. You want to lose weight? Here's where the eat this food over here. You want to gain weight? Here's food over here. And everything is done individually to these guys. And so now, you know, everybody's a lot of team. The Giants were the same way. It's nutrition. It's what's going to make you perform best on Sunday. I mean, Fridays, Mike Singletary will go out and buy everybody chicken and ribs for lunch. You know, you can't do that right now. You know, that's, that's not in the diet for peak performance on Sunday. So there's a lot of different ways of how teams look at things. And I think more are coming in the line than getting away from the cheapness because it doesn't pay. Because if they find out you're cheap, then nobody wants to go be a free agent on that team. And free agency means a lot. And so it's almost like college. The buildings they're in now, uh, you know, they they got all the food, all the weights, all the trainers, you know, half a dozen people on the weight staff. Uh, it's just it, everything is about performing on Sunday. And if you don't do it, you fall behind. So talk about that food again. I want to know a little bit more about the food outside of the players saying, okay, or it's going to be chicken and ribs this day or whatever. But when it came to team nutrition back when you were playing, talk about the focus on team nutrition, if any. None. Zero. Zero. I mean, they we barely had a weigh-in, you know, as long as you play on Sunday. But these guys today, a lot of them are very lean and strong and, you know, 320 pounds and, you know, built very well. Uh, it's all, you know, about trying to maximize your your the amount of money you can make in this profession and stay in as long as you can. But, of course, now with uh, all these cap situations, you can make too much money. And no matter how good you are, they're going to have to let you go to get up underneath the cap number. So it's a totally different uh, environment. Uh, you know, your the amount of money you make does, in part, play how long you stay on that team. Because, uh, like, right now, I think tomorrow or the next day is the end of the uh, – where they can sign you to a uh, – a, uh, uh, what do you call it? Where they 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 give you a number and you got to play for that number, or they sign you back as a uh, the franchise tag, the right? Term? Franchise the, tag, yeah, yeah. Or you yeah. get a long term contract. So it's different uh, when you have to fit under the numbers uh, uh, for every team. And as far as nutrition, and getting back to your standards, yeah. When we played, there was no nutrition. I remember Dick had to put fridge on a weight thing and his wife they brought a nutritionist over to the house she's fixing the proper meals for him and he comes back in still like five ten pounds heavier than he was after practice and uh, then i went to this little hot dog stand up north and they go yeah fred comes by here every day parks in the back when nobody can see him and we give him 10 hot dogs so that's why he was putting on the weight you know but that's just the way it was back then you know just well, the way it was. Yeah, I mean, I could see, I could see my buddy from Al's Beef over at 1079 West Taylor Street coming over there with a big cart and getting everybody Italian beef sandwiches, you know, oh, before the game or even after great. the game. That would oh, be great. Yeah. Yes, is that is that, that the be best great. beef in Chicago? Yes or no? I kind of think, like I was telling you before, they need to make them a little bigger, man. But now somebody was telling me they got a, a medium and a large or extra large now. They got the, the they got the big go on, Yeah, but the one I used to go on was the one on Ontario when you're heading out of town. Right. Like where Dicker's old restaurant was. Yep. It was a little small place, and they just had the ones like that. That's on the south you side know, of the street. Saying. I remember that one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah was, but uh, yeah. go down to Taylor Street. And right, folks, right across from Al's, right across from uh, Maury Majors, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, back in the day. My question to you. Is Al's number one Italian beef at 1079 West Taylor, if you got the big one, is it the best beef in the city, yes or no? That would be the best. If uh, you dip it and you get the jar in there, it's the best. Yes! You, know, you got to know how to eat those things, man. <laughs> dip it and jar in there. Yeah, you got to have the peppers. Yeah. Folks, if you don't know what we're talking about, if you happen to be from Philadelphia, for example, you have that, no, no you have that awful fried cheesesteak 
sandwich thing, right? Where it's made out of flat top, but they put some onions and crap with it. And then they'll, they'll put some cheese whiz on it and they'll call that a sandwich of sorts. It's, it's a difference between cooking and frying, right or wrong. Yeah, yeah, oh, definitely, definitely. Like I said, you got to get it wet. You got to get it wet, dunk it in that a juice sauce. That's right. And, and you start chowing away, man. And then you got to get your elbows, your elbows on the <laughs> on the counter, and and like what uh, Bones had said from from Al's, he he said you got to dive into it and just put your face right into yeah. it. And you know he's been on TV yeah. so many times, but he's been on this show a bunch of times too. He's he friends of the show, but I have to tell you, folks, if you haven't been there for some strange reason, ten seventy nine West Taylor Street in Chicago, right in the heart of Little Italy. And if you don't want to go there, if you don't feel like driving, goldbelly.com. I get nothing for saying this. I just get my beef there. I get my Italian beef from there because I live here in Vegas. And what are our choices? Our choices are negligible. Seriously. Come on, Emery. We have nothing. In the last minute, what's your go-to pizza place? Oh, uh, actually, uh, here, I I go to either Giordano's in Chicago or... uh, 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 Lou Malinati's. That's my go-to. Lou Malinati's. You know, they got the deep dish and yeah, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's thick and you know, one, one or two pieces. That's all you can eat of a small pizza. That's maybe you, know? you. maybe you, but I'm yeah. a slob. So I have a Giordano's. We have two of them here in Vegas. In our last thirty seconds here, we've got two. One of them's ten minutes from my house one way, and the other one is down on the strip. It's ten minutes the other direction. But I have to tell you, the Giordano's here. It's just like going back there. So it's not the best of the best, but what it is, it's kind of like the Honda Accord of pizza. It's very dependable. Like when you buy a Honda Accord, very dependable yeah, car. Yeah. I mean, it's not a it's yeah. not a Rolls Royce or whatever, but it's a very dependable car. That's how I view Giordano's Pizza, a very dependable pizza. Back here with Emory Moorhead, Super Bowl 20 champion right here on the Sports Circus. And thanks for everybody also joining us on Chicago Food Favorites. Make sure you like, subscribe, and follow, and tell your friends. Back here in a few minutes. Hello Americans, it's Uncle Sam here. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes to the IRS or state, don't worry. I've got important news that may help you negotiate a lower tax bill. In today's economy, the IRS has released a variety of new rules and is offering more flexible terms to help Americans looking to settle their IRS debt. If you apply today, we may be able to lift your wage garnishments and release a freeze on your bank assets or business. Our team of tax professionals can resolve your case and stop collection actions against you. Even if you've been audited or haven't filed a return in years, they can help. Call right now and find out if you qualify to settle your IRS debt for far less than what you owe. Pick up your phone right now and call us for a free $500 IRS tax review. Don't wait. Here's the number. Call right now. 800-950-2049. 800-950-2049. 800-950-2049. For the last time, that's 800-950-2049. If you served in the Marine Corps, by now you know about the contaminated water problem at Camp Lejeune. If you were stationed or worked at Camp Lejeune from 1953 to 1987, you probably have a lot of questions. We have some answers. You could be entitled to compensation. Billions of dollars are being allocated to pay for damages to anyone stationed at Camp Lejeune during that time. Unfortunately, it appears that officials may have known the contaminated water problem existed and did little to protect their men. The Semper Fi Code was not honored. If you or someone in your family has developed a serious illness, including various forms of cancer, call this Camp Lejeune legal support line right now. You can't turn back the clock and change what happened, but you can certainly call right now and learn your rights as a Marine. Here's the number. Call 800-335-7196. 800-335-7196. That's 800-335-7196. 
7196. Paid for by Legal Alert Line. If you're tired of the fake news and tired of all the left-wing BS and agendas out there, if you want to do your right part to clean out the swamps and hit the lefties where it hurts, their pocketbook, we all know the president and his cronies hired thousands more IRS employees and agents. Now that's not very American. There's a way to fight back. Fellow conservatives out there, call American Tax Relief. They can help you pay less to the IRS. Don't you give a penny more to spend to the left-wing agendas. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes or haven't filed your taxes in years, call my friends at American Tax Relief. They'll give you a 100% free introduction to their program. And trust me, they're on the right side of your freedom. Pay the IRS less. Call now. 800-958-2157. 800-958-2157. That's 800-958-2157. Paid for by the tax doctor. Welcome back to the sports circuit. I'm Al Bubba Baker, quarterback breaker and the rib maker. <laughs> <laughs> God bless Bubba. He's a funny guy. All right, welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your remaster set live from Las Vegas in the AMP TV studio, AAMP.TV. I guess this segment could be brought to you by Al Bubba Baker, the quarterback breaker and the rib maker. I don't know. Oh, Al's a great guy. He's, he's yeah. just one of those guys that makes you laugh. Emery, thanks for joining us again here on the Sports Circus. Super Bowl champion, that Super Bowl 20 champion with the Chicago Bears. Yes, yeah, so of course, we've got that Dick Buckus jersey on here, right? For everybody that's watching, you can see that. Yes, sir. Yeah, nice round of applause for Mr. Chicago Vocational High School. In case you didn't know, he... Yeah, you know, you know we, had, we had a guy on our team, Jim Morrissey, that wore number 51. And he always tells the story when he was a rookie, and Dick was doing our games on the radio. And so he said, hello, Mr. Bucket. You know, I'm glad to meet you. And he, he says, look, Rook, he pats him on the back. He says, don't get the back of the jersey dirty today. <laughs> 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 he was a linebacker too, but he says, don't get the back of the jersey dirty. I remember. That's a great line. You know, here's an interesting thing. You know, a lot of people like to collect tickets and this and that. I collect all my tickets from back when I was a kid. And so about... Well, back in 1991, 91, I went to the Bulls' first finals against the Lakers. I went to game four and five. And so game four, I'm walking around the forum. That, back then, it was the fabulous forum. Before then, afterwards, it became the Great Western Forum, then everything else, right? The sponsors. So I'm walking around this thing, just waiting for the game to open. I was there with my brother. And I noticed this guy sitting by himself. The guy had hands like this big. I mean, just huge yeah. hands. They were... Uh, they're bigger than my head, which is pretty damn big, if you know what I mean. So anyway, <laughs> so it happens that, you know, the guy was just sitting by himself. And I was like, oh, wow, that's Dick Buckus. So I was like, yeah. I sat right next to him like, Mr. Buckus, very nice to meet you. And then when I shook his hand, it was kind of like this is my hand. My whole hand was completely swallowed up by this enormous yeah. mitt. But, you know, I noticed all these crazy scars and this and that i'm like wow that was a war i bet right and what was funny is i had him he signed my ticket i still have that ticket by the way and he said ah you know that that damn jerry kramer used to step on my fingers and bite my fingers and everything else right but a bit of irony because about six years ago i was at a charity event with our common friend dave over in arizona and he had said, hey, why don't you come to this charity thing? And our friend Don Horn was there, and, and et cetera, et cetera. And they were helping with uh, Candace for the stem cell thing, right? And so, so anyway, sure. so Jerry was sitting next to me and with this big round table. And his son Jordan was kind of like a few seats over. And this was when Jerry was just announced to be uh, a inductee for the hall. And so there's a line of 100, 100 people deep, you know, hey, can you sign this? Can you sign that? Whatever, whatever. And Jerry was a, a pretty gracious guy with that. And so I was I was sitting here. Jerry was sitting here. Jordan was sitting here. Don Horn was here. Dave was here. Lynn Larson was there. And and one time, Jerry leaned over after everybody had already gone and said, Hey, kid, come here. I want to talk to you. So he put that 
big arm on my shoulder turned me around. Hey, I want to talk to you. I'm like, what do you want, old man? And I knew who it was, but I just did. I wasn't playing up to him. He goes, hey, you, you want me to sign something for you? Or better, better yet, strike that. He said, I dropped my pen. This is the first time. He dropped my pen. He goes, can you pick, pick up my pen? I'm like, you have these enormous hands. Why don't you just sit up straight, reach down, and you can grab the pen with that enormous hand of yours. Right? And then I turn myself around away from him, and I'm just cracking up because I knew he's getting flustered over there. And then a few minutes later, it, it was the, the thing, hey, you want me to sign something? I'm like, yeah, you can sign my ass. Excuse me. <laughs> and I turn around. I, I just screwed with him. And so they're like, hey, do you know this? Like, I know who it is. I know who it is. So anyway, a few minutes later, now he's really, his blood is starting to boil because everybody's been kind of kissing up to him because of the whole inductee thing, right? And so he grabs his yeah. shoulder again, turns me on. Hey, kid, turn around. I want to talk to you. I'm like, what do you want, old man? He goes, you know, I got a story for every one of these scars in my hands. I'm like, you don't say. Really? He goes, ah, you know, that damn buckus, all he did was bite my fingers and step on my fingers. I got scars <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> and I was like, I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. I heard the same story in 1991. I don't want to hear you and he had the same story excuses the same scars deal with it but it was great i mean i, I got stories yeah. for for almost an hour just talking to jerry what a great guy but it was really a fun setup you had to be there i guess because when you see the, yeah. when, you, when you see buck is his hands you know he had that just it looked like he i don't know dismantled bombs right and yeah. had to blow up you know they had the, they had those uh cleats with steel tips on them and everything back then yeah i mean it was it was, you think I had it rough? They really had it rough back in those days. And they were playing for peanuts, you know. Right. And they played tough. So played think- every game. And, you know, surgery was exploratory surgery because they didn't know what they were doing. Right. Back there, and they took the best athletes and sliced them open. And you get a, uh, something on your knee like this long, you know, a scar. Mm-hmm. And I've seen Sayers and Buckets and all them guys have those ugly looking scars. The big zippers up and down the leg. That's yeah. just like this right now. You know? Yeah. Who was the toughest so, who was the toughest blocking assignment for you? Historically. Well, I tell you uh I, I tell you the one year for two years, uh Chris Dolman played linebacker before they moved him down. And I could not move that guy at all. Thicker was always on me, man. I see you. I see you. Thicker was always on me. You got to get him, move him off the line. I was like, dude, that guy weighs like 260. I weigh like 225. <laughs> <laughs> you know, then they finally moved him down to the line. And I was so relieved that uh, he wasn't a stand-up outside linebacker anymore. And he was definitely the toughest guy I had to block. And then the other guy, uh, not so much blocking, but when you're running around trying to run a pass pattern in the secondary, uh, first person you better find if you're playing the 49ers is Ronnie Lott. Because he will knock you off your, you know, he'll, he'll knock your head off. And uh, he was a very good safety. And I know when I went out there, you know, in that secondary, you find him right now because he's going to be flying when that ball comes. Okay, so the games that you circle on the schedule, that you knew you could just use them. What do you have? Well, to use them, meaning that you know well, you could you you could do almost anything you want on the field against yeah. this club. I was playing Detroit, playing Detroit Lions, man. For some reason, and I talked to uh, Willie Willie uh, Willie Brown. He was the secondary course coach, and we played in a golf tournament together in the same force. And he would say, "Emory, I tell these guys every year." Don't let him get across the middle. Don't let him go down the scene. And he said they would never listen. And every year I'd make great plays against Detroit. And uh, I couldn't believe it, man, you know, because I just, you know, you play a team twice a year and you do it for six or seven years. And it's like, how can they not stop me? They really was telling me, man, says, man, I tell them all the time. And then the game that was the uh, game you circled on the calendar because you know it's going to be a bloodbath was, of course, the Packers. I mean, you know, we played them guys, even when the Bears were clearly superior. I mean, they did win four games, the Bears beat one in 12. But when you played the Packers, you were in for a 10-9 game, 13-7 game. Uh, it wasn't no blowouts, man. They came there and they fought and they scratched. And it was 
both ways. I mean, both ways. Both teams played hard. Uh, but those Packer games were very memorable. Okay, but also with those Bears-Packer games, a lot of people say, well, you know, the fans can't stand each other, so the players don't like each other also. Is that true? Well, with us, it was Dicka and Forrest Gregg. They hated each other as players, and they were both the head coaches at the same time. And uh, so we made sure that he knew that he did not like the Green Bay Packers. And you are your t- if you got a you know a personality like Dicka, that's who you're going to be playing like. I mean, you take on the personality. Okay. All right. So now I have to ask you about one thing that happened during your time while you were with the Bears. And that thing specifically, I remember Tim Harris grabbing Jim McMahon and throwing him to the turf. And that was... Well, that was uh, that was Charles Martin that uh, did that. I, I, it was five seconds after the play was over. He just wound over to McMahon, picked him up and slammed him on the turf. And it was so bad. Uh, uh, he was like, I don't know. He was in another world or something like that. Now, Timmy Harris now, Dicker hated him, man. He hated Timmy Harris. But I tell you what, that guy was a great athlete, man. He could get around guys. He'd jump around guys, fly up in there. He was a good linebacker, very underrated. Because to me, he was he was as good a, you know, he could have played on the Bears. He had that kind of athleticism that they had on the, the defense that the Bears had. And, uh, and Wilbur Marshall and Otis Wilson. And he was a big guy, too. He was like 6'3 and uh, pretty strong, but fast. Yeah, very fast. Yeah, I seem, to, I seem to remember, for some reason, I thought it was number 92. I thought that was Tim Harris that picked up McMahon, yeah. threw him down, and injured him. In fact, he had to sit out several weeks. Does well, that, that sound right? The end of McMahon's, you know, he never was the same yeah. after that slam. And that was Charles Martin. Because remember, he had the, he had the uh, towel on. And he had number nine, number 34. Everybody was going to try to hurt that day. And that's Damn. the way they played back then. You know, right, the right. commission didn't, you know, say don't do that. And yeah. it was Charles Martin who unfortunately died very young. But he was the guy most famous for throwing back man and ruining his shoulder, I believe it was. And he never did, uh, he never did come back to that performance level. Right. But ironic, in, a bit of, in a bit of irony, McMahon ends up going to where? To Green Bay and Green winning Bay. a Super Bowl yeah. with them, I mean, yeah. of all places. Yeah. He got a Super Bowl ring up there, too. He did. So it's one of the Super Bowl. McMahon went all over the place because he was the kind of guy that if you brought him in on a Wednesday and you needed a quarterback on Sunday, he could read the defenses whether he knew the plays or not. He knew where to go with the ball. So he was very valuable as a backup. Because the guy could come in and play for you right away, and uh, but he wasn't, and unfortunately, you know, he was 190 pounds, and then later in his career, he discovered weightlifting might help prevent you know, right. shoulder injuries and everything. So. Right. Hey, listen, Emery, yeah. Emery, we're at the end of today's show here. I want to give you a quick 30 seconds or so to tell everybody how to follow you, how to get a hold of you, and go ahead and plug the food favors page if you want, whatever, whatever. Yeah, Food Favorites is a great it's a great uh, uh, Facebook page. Always having, uh, you know, what do you like about Chicago this? What do you like about Chicago that? And I, it's picking up in popularity, Sal. I see all the people coming on every day. And uh, and you keep it updated, so it's, it's, it's pretty nice. Yeah, you that's good. You can't get a hold of me unless you go through Sal, y'all. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Say, so, hey, don't worry. <laughs> We're good for the neighborhood, if you know what I mean, right? But also, <laughs> yeah. Emery, thanks for joining us today on The Circus. Always welcome to have you on. And maybe someday we'll have to get your daughter out here, too. What do you think? Oh, man, she's a, she's a pistol. She wore me out at the Super Bowl. I had to go home for like two weeks, man, and get my strength back together. It's uh, a great time partying at the, at the, uh, at the Super Bowl. And, that, that's great uh, I stuff. really enjoy it. And her and I do it every year together daddy-daughter thing, and it's kind of a great thing that she and I enjoy doing together. That's great stuff. Emery, thanks for joining us today. I'm your Ringmaster Sal, and folks, we're going to see you in about 23 hours right here on your favorite station. So until then, for Emery Moorhead, Super Bowl 20 champion, I'm your Ringmaster Sal. We'll see you next time. So long, everyone. Hello, Americans. It's Uncle Sam here. 
If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes to the IRS or state, don't worry. I've got important news that may help you negotiate a lower tax bill. In today's economy, the IRS has released a variety of new rules and is offering more flexible terms to help Americans looking to settle their IRS debt. If you apply today, we may be able to lift your wage garnishments and release a freeze on your bank assets or business. Our team of tax professionals can resolve your case and stop collection actions against you. Even if you've been audited or haven't filed a return in years, they can help. Call right now and find out if you qualify to settle your IRS debt for far less than what you owe. Pick up your phone right now and call us for a free $500 IRS tax review. Don't wait. Here's the number. Call right now. 800-950-2049. 800-950-2049. 800-950-2049. For the last time, that's 800-950-2049.